set the scene. The quiet one in the family. The one who usually keeps things on the DL. Suddenly lights up like the 4th of July. We're talking about a reaction so unexpected. It's like discovering a hidden track on your favorite album. That's right. When I got up close and personal with the Corvette Z06, the excitement couldn't be contained. My family, my girlfriend, they all saw a side of me they thought was reserved for mythical creatures. It was a moment of pure, unadulterated joy. A rare break from the usual cloud of anxiety and quietude that follows around me. That's the kind of jaw-dropping, make you want to shout impact that the Z06 has. But hold up. Before we dive back into this high-octane narrative, let's shift gears for a second. Consider this your Corvette 101. A learning about Corvettes for beginners, if you will. I'm Matt. And this is Rockers Drive Club. So back in 53, Chevy decided to throw its hat into the sports car ring with the Corvette C1, hoping to woo, hoping to woo, hoping to woo, <laughs> hoping to woo, hoping to woo, hoping to woo. <laughs> Hoping to woo the American crowd with something flashy yet familiar. They went with fiberglass, which was pretty rad at the time. The first engine, a blue flame inline six that, let's be honest, wasn't exactly setting the world on fire. Sales were more of a slow burn, really. But hey, they didn't throw in the towel. Instead, they upped their game with the V8 and 55. And suddenly, the Corvette started to flex a bit more muscle, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. But fun fact, I was today years old when I found out this was my dad's first model car. It's pretty cool. The men who designed this had fun. And the builders and the testers had fun. And while it's never going to take the place of the family car, I, for one, am going to have a lot of fun owning it. Rolling into the 60s, enter the C2, affectionately dubbed the Stingray. The Stingray. The Stingray. Now, this wasn't just a new coat of paint on the old model. Oh, no, 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 child. Chevy went full of mad scientists, taking cues from the racing world and even flirting with some mid-rear engine concepts. Can you imagine a Corvette with an engine in the back? The split rear window of the 63 coupe was a stroke of genius, or maybe madness, depending on who you ask. But it was unique. I luckily was able to drive a split window once upon a time, and I was too busy pooping my pants to enjoy it because it was a six-figure car. Yes, you heard that right. A true split window costs as much, if not more, than a brand new Z06. See, now you can kind of see how my parents felt about seeing my reaction earlier. But wait, we have to talk about the C3 Corvette, the era of the shark design that swam through the tumultuous waters. of the 70s and the early 80s. The car that James Carter drove in Rush Hour. After the C2 had left everyone awestruck, Chevy decided, why not go full Ocean Predator? Hence the C3, inspired by the Mako, Mako? Mako Shark 2 concept was born, bringing with it a whole new level of style and swagger from 1968 and 1982. It was a ride of high and lows, from early quirks like rattling interiors to midlife makeovers with safer urethane bumpers, ditching the chrome for a more collision-friendly nose in 73, and the rear in 74. The 75 model waves goodbye to the big block and the convertible, signaling a shift towards a more refined era. Despite the 70s challenges, like emission regulations and the oil crisis, the C3 adapted, offering a cushier ride and more space, all while keeping the disco spirit alive with special editions like the 78 pace car. began as genius and grew to be legend and has become at long last the most advanced production car on the planet. You've never seen anything like this before. A new Chevrolet Corvette like never before. Never before. A Corvette superb in its engineering and technology. The C4 Corvette, cruising into the scene from 84 to 96, was Chevy's sleek leap into the future, ditching the old school body on frame build for a more unified, uni frame construction. This ride was all about embracing the new without losing the Corvette edge. Gone were the days of the coil spring up front, replaced by a lighter, sassier fiberglass monoleaf spring that brought a bit of the anti roll bar vibe to the party. And let's not forget the switch from T tops to target tops, because why not add a little bit more flair? Despite a rocky start, with the 84 model facing some early side eye for its throttle body crossfire injection. The C4 eventually found its groove, doubling its sales figures after its debut. 
It was a blend of modern touches like digital LCD clusters and those classic Goodyear Gator back tires that kept the enthusiasts hooked. And as the years rolled on, the C4 kept refining its game. From the L98's two-point fuel injection boost in 85, to the Zero One's record-breaking speed with a little help from Lotus in 1990. By 96, the C4 was bowing out with a bang, offering up options like the LT4 and a nod to history with the Grand Sport and Collector's Editions. It was a fitting send-off for a Corvette that wasn't afraid to reinvent itself while still keeping the classic cool. These great European exotic sports cars have one thing in common. They've all been beaten by America's great exotic sports car, Chevrolet Corvette. Corvette beat them in maximum lateral acceleration. Corvette beat them in the slalom. And on the road course, Corvette beat them to the finish. Superior performance. That's what it takes to be a new world-class champion. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. The C5 Corvette rolling out from 97 to 04 was a game changer. Strutting onto the scene with barely any parts in common with the C4 predecessor, and oh boy, did it bring the heat. Chevy engineers went to town, making the C5 a testbed for innovations like the heads-up display and active handling systems, which became standard by 2001. This beast was the first vet to rocket drive-by wire throttle and variable effort steering, making it a tech-savvy ride for its time. Under the hood, the C5 boasted an all-new LS1 5.7-liter V8, kicking out 345 horsepower and giving it legs to compete with the big dogs and even some supercars, reaching 0 to 60 in the next snapping 4.5 seconds. Plus, the shift to a transaxle layout meant better weight distribution and handling that would make you grin from ear to ear. With features like ABS, traction control, and a snazzy heads-up display, it was like Chevy was peeking into the future. And let's not forget the fuel efficiency. The Speedster dodged the gas guzzle attacks, proving you can have your cake and eat it too when it comes to performance and economy. Then came the Z06 in 2001, a throwback to the 60s Z06 but with a modern flair, packing an LS6 engine that eventually cranked up to 405 horsepower. Lighter, faster, and meaner, the Z06 was a nod to purists and track enthusiasts, proving that the C5 could dance with the best of them on the asphalt ballet. Let me know in the comments if you remember the C5 Z06 from Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 on PlayStation 2 specifically, because I burned a hole in that disc and I, I just played it too much. <laughs> C6 Corvette, gracing the streets from 2005 to 2013, brought a fresh face to the iconic series, with its first return to exposed headlamps since 1962. Underneath the hood, the C6 started with the LS2 engine, cranking out 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque, later upgraded in 2008 to the LS3 engine which increased displacement to 6.2 liters and boosted power to 430 horsepower. This power hike combined with the car's lighter weight slash 0 to 60 times to just over 4 seconds, making it a formidable opponent against more expensive cars like the Porsche 911 of this time. Special editions like the Z06 and the ZR1 pushed the boundaries further. The Z06 with a 7 liter LS7 V8 offered 505 horsepower and incorporated weight saving measures such as an aluminum frame and balsa wood carbon fiber composite floors. The ZR1 went even further, boasting a supercharged 6.2 liter LS9 V8 with 638 horsepower, capable of reaching speeds up to 205 miles per hour, and featured extensive use of carbon fiber for reduced weight and enhanced performance. The C7 Corvette, produced from 2013 to 2019, marked a significant evolution in Corvette's lineage, reintroducing the Stingray moniker. What you call me? Reintroducing the Stingray moniker for the first time since the C3 generation. Its development, initially set for 2011 model year, was delayed due to financial constraints within General Motors, finally debuting in 2013 for the 2014 model year. Design-wise, the C7 Corvette took a more aggressive and angular approach, especially at the rear with a trapezoidal and squared off end, drawing both admiration and controversy. This design was aimed at attracting a younger demographic, with an emphasis on aerodynamics, and cooling throughout various vents and creases throughout the body. 
At its heart was the all-new 6.2 liter LT1 V8, delivering 455 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque, or 460 horsepower with optional performance exhaust. The engine, paired with a 7-speed manual or a 6-speed automatic transmission, to achieve a 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Notably, the C7 maintained a similar weight to its predecessor. Despite extensive use of lightweight materials like carbon fiber and hydro-formed aluminum chassis, special additions and packages throughout the production run such as the Z51 Performance Package, Grand Sport, and the formidable Z06 with the 650 horsepower supercharged V8 underscore the C7's performance versatility. The ZR1 model, reintroduced in 2018, pushed the boundaries further with a 755 horsepower supercharged V8, showcasing the pinnacle of Corvette performance in the C7 generation. Enter the scene, the C8 Corvette Stingray. Shaking up the game entirely, Chevrolet, deciding the front engine layout was a thing of the past, boldly switched gears to a mid-engine configuration. Why not place the 6.2 liter LT2 V8 right behind the driver and see what unfolds, they pondered. And imagine my surprise when an email ended in my inbox, which I initially took for spam, offering me a chance to review the C51 C8 Stingray. There was no way I could turn that down. Check out that film in the top right corner. I don't know which way it is, one of those directions. But here we are, finally caught up to today, with me behind the wheel of what is now officially my dream car that my friends at Chevy Performance decided to tease me with. This is the 2023 Chevrolet Corvette Z06 3LZ with the Z07 package. is like the secret sauce that elevates the C8Z06 to new heights of performance, complete with a carbon fiber aero package for that extra downforce. The suspension system fine-tuned for precision handling and some very grippy Michelin tires that cling to the asphalt like they're in a committed relationship. Those carbon fiber wheels, insane. Cutting down weight to keep this beast nimble. We're talking 670 horsepower behind you. Ready to launch you from zero to 60 in a blink of an eye, you'll miss it. 2.6 seconds. And with the 8600 RPM redline, this 5.5 liter flat plane crank is all about the high rev thrill. But what's power without control? The standard brakes are no slouch, but the available carbon ceramic setup is where it's at, with monstrous rotors that bring you to a smooth, confident stop from any speed. Brakes feel great. Brakes are great. Great, great brakes. And then there's the magnetic selective ride control, a wizardry and suspension tech that keeps you glued to the road, adapting on the fly to give you the perfect ride. Shifting is a breeze. There's an eight speed dual clutch transmission, delivering snap quick shifts that make sure you're always in a power band. In the 3LZ package, it's like the cherry on top. With all the tech, comfort, and style you could want, the Z06's physique, pure artwork. With its wide stance, sculpted fenders, and aerodynamic lines. It's the very definition of speed, frozen in time. Sliding into the cockpit is like stepping into the future, where fighter jet sophistication meets racetrack adrenaline. A 12 inch digital wonderland keeps you informed and in control, while wireless charging ensures your gadgets are always juiced up and ready for action. Now it's not all sunshine and rainbows for me. Some might find the interior's color palette a bit out there, but hey, those SD seatbelts do add a pop of fun. And my biggest pet peeve is the turn signal. It's a little bit out of reach, but that's just a tiny blip on the otherwise flawless radar. In short, or long, the Corvette Z06 is a delightful concoction of power, elegance, and tech savviness. Perfect for the thrill seeker who loves a dash of practicality. Whether you're loading up groceries or tearing up the track, this car does it with style and a wink, proving that you can really have the best of both worlds. I'm not a big fan of the interior. That's just me, I'm not, I'm not a fan of white interior, or creamy, gray, whatever you would call this interior. Um, but the, the orange, it screams McLaren and I love it. This car, this color is perfect for this car. The black and orange is perfect. Um, it fills in the gaps that needs to be filled in with every other Corvette that I've seen so far. This looks the best. Z07, Z07 package is a must. You can see the big wing in the back window. It's, it's insane. And it does its job very, very well, I must say.
trying to be unbiased about this, but it's very, very hard. Like, you don't understand. This car is so much fun. <laughs> but out the, before all of the Z07 package and everything that this car has, out the door, base model Z06 is $119,000. That's a lot of money, but in today's prices, is it really? Like, isn't that kind of normal for supercars nowadays? Like, all supercars are gonna be up in the six-figure price range, so it's gonna be kind of hard to find something like this under 100K. If you guys know, comment down below. If you, if you guys have a car in mind that's almost as good as this car, but cheaper, comment down below. It's on performance traction, I don't know why. Oh, I can change it. Nice, all right, bet. Launching, ready? listen to that it sounds so good break to the floor traction all the way off but it's gonna have a competitive mode or whatever just choose which one you want and then just floor it Oof, such luscious. <laughs> 